Welcome to the deep dive. Today, we're jumping into something huge, really, something that feels like it's changing everything. The future of work, automation, and you. Our mission here uh, for this deep dive is to really get under the hood of how automation and AI specifically are transforming work. Yeah. You know, from the factory floor right up to the C-suite. Exactly. And we're not just talking tech specs. We'll be digging into insights from uh, leading economists, from people actually leading these companies and the latest research. We want to highlight both the, well, the incredible potential, but also some of the challenges, maybe even the anxieties that come with this new era. Really, the goal is to help you figure out how you can adapt, maybe even, you know, really thrive and find your place in the shifting landscape. Okay, let's start there then, because automation, I think for a lot of us, that word still brings up images of like those big clunky robots on an assembly line. But what does automation actually mean today? It's clearly more than that now. Oh, absolutely. It's evolved significantly. Today, we're talking about things like agentic AI. Mm. Think of these as um, autonomous digital agents, software that can analyze information, make decisions, and then actually act on those decisions, all with pretty minimal human oversight. Okay, so software doing things on its own. Right, and then you've got cobots that's short for collaborative robots. Mm -hmm. These are designed specifically to work with humans side by side in the same space. And it's not just physical robots, we're also seeing these incredibly powerful algorithms making uh, quite sophisticated managerial decisions now. Managerial decisions, wow. Yes, and what's really driving this, according to McKinsey, are innovations like that agentic AI we mentioned, but also multimodality AI that understands text, images, audio, all sorts of data, and better transparency in how AI works. The World Economic Forum, uh, they found that 86% of companies see AI as being hugely transformative by 2030. 86%. That's, yeah, that's a massive number. So that helps frame what it is. But let's talk scale. How big is this transformation, really? Are we talking gradual change, or is this more like a, you know, a tidal wave hitting the job market? Well, the statistics certainly suggest something pretty dramatic. Some sources, like Research.com and Forbes, they're projecting that maybe 20 to 60 percent of all job functions could be automated by 2040. 60 percent. Yeah. And for certain jobs, it could be even higher. Goldman Sachs put out a study suggesting uh, maybe 300 million full-time jobs globally could be replaced by AI, hmm. particularly hitting the U.S. and Europe hard. 300 million. That's yeah, staggering. It is. But importantly, it's not just about jobs lost. The World Economic Forum also predicts that while, yes, maybe 85 million jobs are displaced by 2030, they also see 97 million new roles being created, roles specifically adapted to this new way of working, you know, humans collaborating with machines. Okay, so new jobs too. What kind? We're seeing entirely new titles pop up. Things like flow control specialists for these hyper-automated warehouses or even... Uh, AI agent bosses, basically, people managing teams of automated digital colleagues. Managing AI agents, like they're your team member. Kind of, yeah. So it's less about jobs vanishing entirely and more about jobs changing shape, mm. morphing into something new. Right, that makes sense. But it does sound like some roles or maybe just specific tasks within roles are more vulnerable than others. I remember reading something from uh, David Otter, the MIT economist. He warned that automation could actually devalue certain skills, make previously valuable work almost worthless. That's a really critical point. It often comes down to tasks within a job, not the whole job disappearing overnight. Right. Like accounting clerks, for example. When automation took over the routine data entry, the clerks who could focus on a higher level analysis interpretation, their wages actually went up. Yeah. Their complex skills were still valuable. But then look at inventory clerks. Their jobs were more focused on those repetitive tasks that automation could easily handle. They experienced more de-skilling as their core functions disappeared. So it depends on the task mix. Exactly. We're seeing it now on Wall Street. Junior analyst roles are getting squeezed because AI can generate investment reports in, you know, minutes. Work that used to take hours or days. Right. But contrast that with, say, skilled trades here in the UK. Yeah. Heating engineers, electricians, or even skilled hospitality roles. Those seem much more robust, requiring hands-on work, problem-solving, human interaction. So the key question isn't just, will my job exist? Precisely. It's more like, which parts of my job can be automated? And critically, can I shift my focus? Can I elevate what I do beyond those automatable tasks? Okay, so that's the framework, the theory. But how is this actually playing out? What does it look like on the ground day to day? Can we talk specific examples? Oh, absolutely. We're seeing it everywhere. Look at Amazon warehouses. Robots now outnumber humans in many of them. Right. I've seen videos of those. 
Yeah, but it hasn't just meant job losses. It's created new jobs like robot maintenance specialists, so those flow control specialists yeah. managing the whole automated system. Okay, so new roles alongside the robots. Exactly. Then you have Salesforce. Their CEO, Mark Benioff, mentioned AI, is handling something like 30 to 50% of employee tasks. 50%? Wow. Yeah. Now, that statement also came around the time they announced about 1,000 job cuts, so there's definitely a complex relationship there. Hmm. On Wall Street, like we mentioned, AI creating IPO prospectuses almost instantly. That's leading firms to anticipate cutting junior staff by maybe 10, even 30%. So significant impacts in finance. Definitely. And looking ahead, Microsoft has this vision where pretty much everyone becomes a sort of boss of AI agents. You're not doing all the manual grunt work. You're directing and overseeing these automated assistants. Your value shifts to strategy, judgment, creativity. Supervising AI, that's a different skill set. It absolutely is. Yeah. The overall trend seems to be replace routine tasks to free up humans for the things machines can't do well. Complex problem solving, creativity, building relationships, ethical judgment. Okay. But one thing that comes up a lot is this worry about de-skilling. You know, the idea that if the tools do all the heavy lifting, the thinking, do we humans actually lose our expertise? We hear about it with pilots and autopilot, maybe lawyers relying too much on AI for research. Is that a major risk here? It's definitely a valid concern and something we absolutely need to watch. Deskilling can happen if we're not careful about how we design and implement these systems. But uh, there's also a more optimistic side emerging. Stanford did a big survey, like 9,000 workers back in 2024. And most of them actually felt automation improved things like their safety on the job, their comfort, even their autonomy, and their pay, especially if they got financial incentives to adopt the new tech. Interesting. So they felt better off in many cases. In many cases, yes. And this ties into the work of uh, human-centered automation researchers. Their whole argument is that we need to design these systems around user needs, around empowering the human, not just for raw technical efficiency or convenience. Designing for people, not just the process. Exactly. And with agentic AI becoming more common, what's really needed across the board is AI fluency. Basic digital literacy isn't quite enough anymore. It means understanding, at least conceptually, how these AI tools work, what they're good at, what their limits are, so you can effectively collaborate with them. So it's not just for the techies anymore. Everyone needs some level of AI understanding. Pretty much. Which makes up skilling and reskilling absolutely critical. Learning how to work alongside AI, how to leverage it, that's going to be a core competency. Okay, let's zoom out a bit then. If we connect this to the bigger picture, automation isn't just about jobs and skills. It has these wider societal ethical implications too. You touched on inequality earlier. How might AI actually deepen those divides? Yeah, that's a major concern. You could see a scenario where maybe complex tasks currently done by college educated professionals get automated away. While jobs and skilled trades, often held by those without degrees, remain relatively stable because they're harder to automate. That could really shuffle the deck in terms of economic outcomes, potentially increasing inequality. Hmm, an unexpected twist on inequality. Potentially. And then there's the mental health aspect. Anxiety is real. One study found 71% of U.S. workers worry AI threatens their job security. Almost half are anxious just about the sheer pace of change. And, you know, 65% fear being replaced altogether. That's a lot of anxiety. It is. And thinkers like Pastora Escuredo argue that if we over-automate, just push efficiency above all else, we could actually undermine human cognition, our ability to think critically. Right. They stress that we need to restructure work with real ethical foresight, not just let the tech dictate everything. So intentional design again. Yes. Which means governments, businesses, mm -hmm. they need to be actively shaping this. David Otter and his colleagues strongly advise focusing policy on supporting human work, especially in crucial areas like education and healthcare, where the human element is irreplaceable. It really underscores that this is as much a human challenge as a technological one. So digging into that human experience, what are workers actually feeling on the ground beyond the anxiety stats? What does the research tell us about how people are experiencing this shift day to day? Well, that Stanford study had another interesting finding. Workers who are already kind of motivated looking for career growth, mm -hmm. they tended to feel more positive about automation. Ah, okay. Mindset matters. It seems to. Yeah. Especially, again, if they saw tangible benefits like financial rewards for learning the new tools. It suggests that framing automation as an opportunity for growth, not just a threat, can make a big difference. Right. We're also seeing a lot of research now into hybrid work models, not just remote versus office, but humans and AI 
actively collaborating. Think co-authoring documents, analyzing data together, even setting meeting agendas with AI assistants. It's becoming embedded in the workflow. Like a true partnership. Ideally, yes. Take HR, for instance. AI tools are now reducing hiring time by like 45% in some cases, helping improve diversity metrics by analyzing applicant pools more objectively. And that frees up the HR team to focus on strategy, on employee development, things that require that human touch, instead of just sifting resumes. So real efficiency gains allowing for more strategic human work. Exactly. But And this is crucial if automation is implemented poorly. And without transparency, without adequate training, without clear ethical guidelines, it can absolutely backfire. It can crush job satisfaction, erode trust between employees and management. How it's rolled out is almost as important as the tech itself. That makes perfect sense. Implementation is key. So, okay, bringing it all together, for someone listening right now, feeling maybe a mix of excitement and nervousness, what does this all mean for you? What are the concrete, actionable steps someone can take today to navigate this future? Okay, great question. There are definitely things you can do. First, I'd say, really map your tasks. Sit down and analyze your current job. Which parts are routine, predictable, maybe right for automation, and which parts require judgment, creativity, empathy, complex problem solving. Know thyself job-wise. Pretty much. Second, actively learn the AI tools that are relevant to your field. If you're in marketing, maybe it's generative AI for content. If you're an analyst, perhaps exploring some of these agentic AI platforms. Get your hands dirty. Be proactive about learning. Absolutely. Third, start thinking about how you can embrace hybrid roles. How can you become a collaborator with AI? That might mean supervising AI agents, interpreting their outputs, using their insights to make better decisions. Think conductor, not just player. Got it. Collaborate, don't compete. All right. Fourth, upskill early and continuously. Don't wait. Seek out a training, whether it's formal courses or self-learning, in areas like digital literacy, data analysis, maybe even robotics or AI ethics, depending on your path. Stay ahead of the curve. Exactly. And finally, number five, consciously lean into your human edge. Cultivate those uniquely human skills, empathy, creativity, critical thinking, complex communication, ethical reasoning. These are the areas where humans will likely always have an advantage over machines. Focus on what makes us human. That's the core of it. And of course, it's not just on individuals. Employers need to step up, invest in training, ensure transparent AI governance. Governments and educators have a huge role in redesigning curricula for this hybrid future. It's a collective effort, but those are really practical steps for individuals. Looking ahead then, if we manage this transition well, what could that future look like? Can we paint an inspiring picture? I think we can. Imagine a future where, say, frontline workers in manufacturing or logistics have cobots handling the dangerous, strenuous tasks, making their jobs safer, maybe shifting their roles towards oversight or quality control. Safer, less physically demanding work. Right. And white collar professionals are using agentic AI as a powerful assistant, freeing them up from tedious tasks to focus on high level judgment, building client relationships, real innovation. More time for the strategic stuff. Exactly. Maybe traders and analysts evolve into these AI collaborator roles, using AI's immense data processing power to inform their high stakes decisions and interpretations. Human insight guiding machine power. Precisely. And think about educators and healthcare professionals. AI could help them personalize learning or treatment plans at scale, manage administrative burdens, allowing them to amplify their essential human impact, reaching more people more effectively. Technology enhancing care and teaching. Yes. And the common thread through all of this, the really crucial part, is that everyone learns how to manage AI, how to direct it, how to use it ethically, mm -hmm. rather than feeling managed by it. That's the vision. Automation designed for people, safe, ethical, genuinely empowering. That's the goal we should be aiming for. That's a powerful vision. So as we wrap up this deep dive, the key takeaway seems clear. Automation isn't some predetermined destiny barreling towards us. It's a tool. Mm -hmm. And the future of work isn't really about humans versus machines. It's about finding the best way for humans with machines to move forward. Absolutely. And perhaps a final thought for everyone listening. Knowing these trends, understanding the potential, thinking about the skills needed, how might you personally actively contribute to shaping that more human-centered future? A future where automation truly enhances lives and unlocks potential. Something to reflect on.